someone declares something prophetically over you, whenever someone speaks a prophetic declaration over your life, you have to believe the prophet. Now, this is important, and I'll tell you why. Because when you hear a prophetic declaration over your life, that prophetic declaration, hear me, the prophet of God imposes the will of God on your life. The prophet of God imposes the will of God on your life. In other words, when, how many of you have ever had someone tell you, I, I don't mean to impose on you? Have you ever heard that? Oh, they apologize and they say, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to impose on you. What that means is, I don't mean to impose my will on you. And so usually it comes with an apology. But it's important for us to understand that prophetic declarations do just that. They impose the will of God on your life. The Bible says that you shall have Whatsoever you what? You say. Is there an amen? The Bible also says that we shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass. Are you hearing me? We shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass. The Bible actually says that if you forgive someone's sins, they shall be forgiven. Did you know that? The Bible actually, actually says that if you forgive someone else's sin, they will be forgiven. It's important for us to understand that we walk on the earth with authority. And God has given us this power and this authority. He's given us his word. Somebody say amen. And we have to learn how to operate in the kingdom of God. And so whenever a prophet declares something over you, if that's something that you desire in your life to come to pass, receive it. Somebody say, I receive it. No, no, say it louder. Say, I receive it. Whenever a prophet of God is declaring something over you, if you agree with it, receive it. Receive it. Because the prophet has the anointing, the prophetic unction, to impose on you the will of God. Are you listening to me? In the name of Jesus. You know, I would always often wonder in the Old Testament when a prophet would declare something and I would say, wait a minute, that's interesting. He didn't, you know, he didn't necessarily consult with God about this. It's because the prophet has the ability and the unction of God, the governmental prophet, to declare and to impose God's will on your life so you receive it in the name of Jesus. If a prophet declares something that you have need of, if a prophet declares something over your life or even to the congregation, to the atmosphere, is there an amen? And there's a prophet up here and he's declaring something and or someone that's declaring something prophetically and that's something that you need in your family, you need to see in your personal life, you need to see over your finances, just Receive it. Amen. Receive it. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't say, well, I wonder if that's really God. No, if it's something that you need and it bears witness in your spirit, receive it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. How many say glory to, God? glory to God? What does the Bible say? Let me give you the word of God. The Bible says, believe his prophets and you shall prosper somebody say believe his prophets and it'll result in me prospering somebody say amen to that all right well we're going to get into the word right now and we're going to we're going to we're on part two of a of a a series uh entitled the power of meditation on the word of god the power of meditation on the word of god now before you close me out, I want you to listen very carefully. Give God the next 30 minutes or so. Give the Lord 
the next few moments that we're together and receive the word of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Well, Father, I ask you to think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords, and I ask you to send the kind of anointing in this place that makes preaching and teaching easy. I ask you, dear God, that your word would go forth and that it would evoke change, that it would cause hearts to turn, that it would cause, dear Father, lives to be transformed. Your word goes forth. That's what you said, Lord. And it does not return back void, but it succeeds and accomplishes in all that you sent it to accomplish. And so I thank you for this in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, I arrest every distracting spirit in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. I welcome holy angels into this place. Lord, fill this place with angelic hosts that God would give you glory even as the word goes forth. I thank you, Father, that people are healed even as God's word is being unfolded, Lord, and revealed. People are being healed. People will be healed. People will be healed. People will be delivered. Mindsets will change. Circumstances will shift in the name of Jesus Christ. As the word of the Lord is being preached, as the word of the Lord is being preached, as the word of the Lord is being sown, glory to God, it's falling in good ground, good ground, good ground. And it will produce a mighty harvest, a mighty harvest in Jesus' name. Somebody shout real loud, amen. amen. Well, glory to God. I want to deal, as I mentioned, with the power of meditating on God's word. And I want to read as the text for our series, Joshua 1.8, Joshua 1.8. And uh, if you have your Bibles, open up to Joshua 1.8. If you do not, please look up at the screen. I encourage you to bring your Bibles with you. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. It reads like this. The book of the law, or this book of the law, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it, day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I want you to look at that verse again. The book of the law, when the Bible refers to the book of the law, it is referring to what you and I make reference to as being the word of God. And so, we could literally say, this word of God shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. It's interesting that they link the mouth with meditation. They link the mouth with meditation. Why is this important to note? Well, it's important to note because the word meditation literally means not just to ponder, not just to think intensely, not just to, uh, uh, to focus in on, but the word meditation also means to mutter, to mutter. In other words, to quietly say something to yourself, to mutter. You know, have you ever seen someone muttering? And some parents will tell their child, what are you muttering about? In other words, what are you saying quietly to yourself? right? It's important for us to understand that part of meditation is linking your mouth or what you are saying to yourself in spite of who's listening. You are an audience of one. It's you speaking to yourself. Is there an amen? It's taking a scripture. Whenever I wake up in the morning, I usually mutter. And this is what I mutter. I usually mutter... This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not telling that to my wife. I'm not saying that to my children. I'm saying that to myself. I'm declaring the word of God. I'm muttering. I'm, I'm setting my mind to begin to 
focus in on the fact that this is going to be a good day. Is there an amen? And that I'm going to rejoice in it. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry in it. I'm not going to fret in it. I'm not gonna be anxious in it. I'm going to rejoice in it. Somebody say rejoice. rejoice. Say it again. Rejoice. Glory to God. Now watch this. But this is important. Please, if you get anything today, anything I say today, get this. It says, meditate in it day and night that you may. That you may. Meditation is what enables you to observe God's word. It's meditating. It's taking God's word. It's focusing in on it. It's thinking about what you're reading. It's giving it intentional pondering and thought. And the word of God that you give thought to. The word of God that you intently think about. Is the one that empowers you to be able to observe it or live it out. The problem with many of our churches is that we have people that may read just like they read a newspaper, they'll read for informational purposes. But they never stop, pause, and meditate on what God is saying because if you meditate on what God is saying, you increase the percentage or the likelihood that you are going to more naturally respond biblically, respond in a godly manner. Why? Because you've taken time to let the Word of God sink into your mind, into your spirit. Is there an amen? Somebody say, let it sink. Let it sink. Say, let it go deep. Say, let it go deeper. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, amen. So, we have people that will just simply read the Bible. Go to sleep. Get up in the morning and not live it. They'll read it, but not live it. They'll read it, but not live it. Listen, they'll even hear it, but not live it. They'll hear it, but not live it. What's going on? What's the missing component? Meditate in this book. Day and night. In other words, on an ongoing basis. Watch this. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. What God is saying is this. He's not saying, read it and do it. Read it and make sure that you do everything. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, meditate in it. And if you meditate in it, it's going to get so deep in you that you're going to be able to do it. There's a big difference. There's a huge difference there. Because we have people that read it and try to live it. Read it and try to live it. They're like, oh, man, I keep on messing up, Pastor. I don't know if I can do this thing. So they end up backsliding, turning their back on God one com completely. Just living like the devil, doing everything that, that, that they've been meditating on. They're doing everything they've been giving thought to and really thinking about. The person that gets high. Listen, the person that gets high will usually be thinking about their high before they get high. They're meditating on the weed. They're meditating on the weed. What are you meditating on? Listen, 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 listen. We have people having issues with pornography and with sexual addiction examine what they're meditating on they don't call it meditation but it still doesn't change the nature of the thing the truth is that whatever you think on whatever you give thought to whatever fixes it fixes and focuses your mind on whatever you're focusing your mind on that's what you're going to end up doing according to. See, so God knows what you're made of. 
He knows how he made you and how he constructed you and he knows how you work and how you work best. And because he knows how you work best, he says, okay now, Joshua, you're going to face some giants. You're going to face Jericho. That's going to be your first city. And the moment you get to Jericho, the first thing you're going to see is these huge walls. These massive walls. He says, inside there's an army. Inside there's wealth. Inside there's so much. He says, watch this. But if you're going to overcome Jericho, beat Jericho, if you're going to conquer Jericho, and then after that conquer Ai, the city of Ai, and then after that conquer every other city and king after that, he says, you're going to have to get my word deep on the inside of you because if you can get it deep on the inside of you, then nothing's going to be impossible to you and you're going to believe that I can do anything. It doesn't matter how tall the wall is, how thick the wall is. It doesn't matter how big the army is. You've got my word so deep inside of you that now all you're going to do is get up in the morning and live according to. Is there an amen in the house? You mean business with God? Put a check on what you're thinking. You want to live a transformed life? Put a check on what you're thinking. Watch what you're thinking. The psalmist said it this way. As a man thinketh. Watch this. Watch this. As a man thinketh in his heart. Ah, wait a minute. Not just here. He was thinking about it so much, it got down here. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, he's going to live what he's been thinking that have reached, has reached his heart. I'm preaching better than you're shouting. But that's all right. I don't need your shout. I want you to get it. I really want you to get this. Because there is a dichotomy in the body of Christ. We have believers not believing. We have believers getting offended at pastors like me if we put something on social media against abortion. I have had Christians nearly insult me because I'm taking a stand for life. How is it that we get professing Christians to a point where they get offended if you take a stand, a social stand against social issues that have gone away, that have become immoral. Where do we, where do we get off thinking we can change God's heart on a matter? I'll tell you where we get off thinking that, when we don't know God's heart. When we don't know God's heart, all we see is pastor's heart. And pastor's heart, if it doesn't agree with my heart, then I don't agree with pastor. When I'm not declaring this on my own, yes, there are difficult situations. But how do you weigh difficult matters? How do you judge a difficult matter? You don't judge a difficult matter based on your own opinion. You don't judge a difficult matter based on the popular opinion. You base a difficult matter on the Word of God, stable, unshaking, unwavering, unadulterated Word of God. Otherwise, we're going to be fluctuating up and down with the ebb and flow of public opinion. With public opinion. Well, pastor, I don't agree. Like the church lady of SLL, SLN. 
isn't that special. It's important for us to get God's word. See, how do you live as a married man? Faithful married man. How? Because there's a whole lot of things that are vying for your attention. And there's a whole lot of things competing for your devotion. How does a man remain faithful to one woman in today's culture? Trust in his ability to withstand? Paul said, therefore, having no confidence in the flesh. So you can't have confidence in your ability to withstand. So how am I going to prove to myself that I'm going to stay faithful to one woman? By taking God's word on marriage, on loving my wife as Christ loved the church and was willing to give himself up for her, I have to meditate on that. It can't just be head knowledge. It's got to reach my heart. Because if it reaches my heart, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If in my heart I am a man that seeks to be like Christ to my wife, to love her, if the Bible says, therefore flee all sexual immorality, all youthful lust, flee from that, I'm going to meditate on that. How does that look like? What does that look like in my life? When do I flee? How do I flee? Am I always running? Or can I flee even from my bedroom looking at a television program that I ought not be looking at? How do I flee from that? Leave the room? No, change the channel. I just fled. Is there an amen? Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? So how do I do this? How do I do this? I have to be intentional about having the, the character and the mind of Christ formed inside of me. How does the, the mind of Christ get formed in me? How? By taking time reading the scriptures and stopping and meditating in it. Somebody say meditating in it. Now watch this. This is powerful. This is powerful. Watch this. I was... I always get people, watch this, I always get people that tell me, um, Pastor, the Bible says that if I call upon the Lord, he will answer me. The Bible says that if I, if I, if I call, God is answering while I'm yet calling him. And so they're always praying, but getting very little results. Isn't that the truth? Somebody say truth. Why is it that a lot of people, not all, of course, because we have so many testimonies of the power of God answering prayer here, but why is it that so many in the body of Christ are praying but not seeing very many results? Praying but not seeing very many results. Why? Well, God answers through his word, and he says why. Uh, can you put up Psalms 91, please? Psalms 91 and, and I want you to put uh, the, the um, New King James Version, the New King James Version, and uh, Psalms 91, verse 15. Psalms 91, verse 15. When you, ha when, you, when you find it in your Bibles, Psalms 91, verse 15, just say amen. When you find it, um, it says, watch this now. This is the promise. Everybody say the promise. Say it again. Come on, say this real loud. Say the promise. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and him and honor him. I will deliver him and honor him. Don't we love that verse? It's an amazing verse. It's an encouraging verse. It's a powerful verse. But if you read Psalms 91 verse and claim verse 15 without reading Psalms 91 1, you're never going to see Psalms 91 15 in your life lived out experientially. Are you listening to me? 
Let's go to Psalms 91, verse 1. What does it say? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Pause right there. Listen to me very carefully. When you continue to read, it tells you what are the benefits of dwelling in the secret place and abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And part of the results or the fruit of you dwelling and abiding, hear me, is that you will answer and God will, you will pray and God will answer. You will seek him, he'll honor and deliver you. We want verse 15, but we don't want to do verse 1. Now, stay there on verse 1. Underline, those of you that have your Bibles, underline the word dwell. Everybody say dwell. dwell. Say it again. Dwell. It says, he who what? Dwell. He who what? Dwell. Dwells. Let's just change it up a bit, please. If Napoleon dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty, if Jennifer Cruz if Daniel Cruz dwells in the secret place, if he dwells, the word dwells is the word yashab in the Hebrew. Everybody say yashab. That's the word to dwell. And it means this, to sit down. It means to settle. It means to remain. But I like this. It means to marry. It means to stay. It means to continue in. Watch this. So who is it that he wants to deliver when he calls? Who is it that he answers when he prays? The one who dwells. The one who yashab takes time to sit down. Listen. To settle. You know what your problem is? Many people in the body of Christ, what our problem is, we want God to answer quickly when we pray, to honor us and to deliver us. Watch this now. When we call that God be present, but the problem is we don't settle, we don't stay in Christ, we don't settle in Christ, we don't marry Christ. We don't continue in his word but yet we want the benefits of it. Is this helping somebody? I don't mean to offend anybody, but if you are offended, just ask yourself why. Because we want a watered down gospel. We want a watered down Sunday morning experience. We just, we just want to be told how good we are, how great we are, all of the things we're going to accomplish. We want to be told that all, that all we need is someone to pray for us, and that's it. We are completely, 100% free. When God says, I want to answer you. Yes, I can answer you through someone else's prayer, but you're not going to maintain it unless you start dwelling. Unless you start abiding. Is there an amen in the house? Yes. Somebody say, dwell, dwell. And, abide. and abide. Come on, say it again. So what is meditation? Meditation is dwelling on the Word of God. According to John 1, 1, who is the Word of God? Jesus. So when the Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High... God is literally saying, he who dwells in my word. Jesus is the one we run to. Jesus is our secret place. Jesus is our mighty God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Jesus is our strong tower. He's the one. You can't, listen. You can't meditate in God's word 
without meditating in God. You can't get God's word deep in your heart without getting God himself deep in your heart. Is there an amen in the house? Amen. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is the kind of message that I can't preach quickly because it's got to be broken down to where you assimilate it and take it in. Is there an amen? I can preach a great sermon where I can, if you get close enough, I'll spit on you. You, you, you can get really close, I can stomp, and you can feel the vibration on the, on the wooden floors. But what are you gonna do when pastor's not around to spit on you and to cause the floor to vibrate what are you going to do on Monday when the devil comes messing with your mind and wants you to focus on something illicit or perverted or wrong or wicked or twisted what are you going to do when your mind is drifting away Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say pastor. pastor. I, receive I receive this word. Is there an amen? amen. Woo! Woo! Man, I feel the anointing of God. Listen, we may not be jumping, hooping and hollering, but God is in the house because his word is rich. Is there an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Look what Psalms 119, verse 97 and 98 says. Listen. Psalms, what? 119. Somebody shout 119. Verse 97 and 98. What does it say? Listen to this carefully. It says, oh, how I love your law. Remember, how I love your what? Your word. Say your word. It, watch this. It is my meditation all the day. All the day. Woo! Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me or ever surrounding me. So you need the wisdom of God. How do you get the wisdom of God to make you wiser than your enemies? Glory to God. It's by loving God's law, His word, and taking time to meditate in it, to settle down in it, to think about it. Is there an amen? To continue in it, to stay there, to stay there, to stay there. Well, I ain't got time for that, Pastor. Too many people to see, places to go to. I've got to go here, run here, run there. I've got a lady to see, a lady to go check out. I've got a guy to go check out. Come on, somebody. I've got this guy that's been, that's been inboxing me, and he thinks I'm cute. He thinks I'm pretty. I have this girl that's checking me out, and she thinks I'm handsome. So I've got to, I've got to run around going here and there trying to please everybody. And you're being defeated in the process. Living like the devil. Somebody ought to get excited right now. Now watch this. Now I gave you the spiritual benefits. Watch this. Of meditation. But when God commands us to do something... It always affects us in three areas. Hear this. It affects you physically. It affects you spiritually. And it affects you emotionally. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. And we, if we're going to go in biblical chronological order, it will affect you spiritually first. Hear this emotionally second and physically third watch I'm gonna give you some stats real quickly well why is meditation so important and why does God command us to meditate of course because it takes God's Word and 
takes it from the mind to the heart. And when it reaches the heart, you're able to live it out. The word that is not in the heart, you don't live out. But you will live whatever is in your heart. Is there an amen? All right. You've got jealousy. What? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, you've got jealousy, I see. Okay, if you've got jealousy in your heart, guess what? You're going to see your spouse doing things they're not even doing. You, li listen, oh, but pastor, you don't know. You don't know. I, I do know this. I do know this, that when you open your heart to a spirit of jealousy, a spirit of jealousy, I'm not talking about a legitimate concern, someone's checking out your wife, you found text messages, you know, that's a legitimate concern. I'm talking about unsubstantiated suspicions. Just because your wife dressed up a little extra today. Oh, I just, it's a sunny day. I just thought I'd get dressed up. Mm-hmm. It is a sunny day. And so you start going off into this jealousy. And jealousy, listen, will sink deep into your heart to the point where you no longer trust someone that may be as faithful as Mother Teresa. <laughs> listen, someone with a spirit of jealousy will even be jealous of Mother Teresa. <laughs> They'll be like, why are you dressing like that? I can see your big toe. Why are you hanging out with that orphan too much? You've been hang hanging out with that orphan. I got to make it very practical, but listen to me. Meditation, watch this now, reduces stress. You want to reduce stress in your life? Meditate on God's word. And by the way, when I talk about meditation, I'm not talking about the kind of meditation they teach you in yoga classes. I'm not talking about meditation that they teach you even in karate classes. That kind of meditation is usually transcendental meditation, and transcendental meditation is only a demonic and satanic counterfeit to the real meditation that God wants us to engage in. You see, transcendental meditation practices or or stems from the premise that you need to empty your thoughts, empty your mind, get it completely empty. That's transcendental meditation, empty out completely. Whereas biblical meditation, scriptural meditation, is not empty your mind, it's fill your mind. A big difference but when you meditate on God's Word listen to me you begin to reduce stress and meditation is proven to make you healthier as a matter of fact it encourages a lifestyle a healthy lifestyle studies show that meditating increases watch this meditating increases the immunity and helps to fight off diseases. This is a scientific fact. 
meditation will increase your immune system and helps you to fight off diseases. It increases the nitric oxide that dilates your blood vessels and causes your blood pressure to drop, which improves cardiovascular health. Those of you with high blood pressure, meditate on God's Word. And you're going to see how your blood pressure will begin to regulate. Somebody say amen to that. Watch this. Meditation also improves brain development. No, I take that back. It doesn't improve brain development. It literally causes brain development. It causes your brain to develop. In fact, medical imaging, hear this, and you can Google this on your own at your own time. Medical imaging has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that meditation causes the brain to increase in gray matter and thus it becomes thicker this begins to cause a greater increase in what is known as signaling connectors. As your brain increases in gray matter, what happens is your brain is now able, it's thicker and now is able to communicate with all of its connectors. So you become less forgetful. All because you're meditating on God's word. That's why, Dennis, that's why the Bible says that his word is medicine to all of our bones. Is there an amen in the house? Everybody stand to your feet. I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want to give you more. But let me just give you one more point of the benefits of meditating. Meditation reduces levels of blood lactate in your system, which reduces anxiety attacks and helps eliminate insomnia. Some of you all haven't been sleeping at night. Try meditating on God's Word. It will increase levels of blood lactate and reduce anxiety attacks and help to eliminate insomnia and ulcers. The next time that we get together, which will be the last subject, the last uh, message on this subject, I want to give you some how-tos, suggestions on how to effectively meditate. Is that all right? Is that all right? Now, some of you that came here today, you're facing difficult situations. You may be going through a very difficult time right now. But I'm going to challenge you with this. God can give you a quick fix. I've seen those. More than you could imagine. I've seen God move miraculously because someone reaches out, touches him by faith, and he gets, they get their healing, A, or they get their deliverance, B, or they're emotionally healed, and so on and so forth. But that same person, if you examine them for a little while, they begin to go back and slip back into depression, addiction, whatever else was going on in their life before God moved. Is it God's fault? No. Is it that God didn't have enough power to keep him? No. That's not it at all. It's that God forces us to grow. God wants to force you to grow. If you're his son, I guarantee you, he's going to do everything he can that he knows how to get you to grow. Somebody say, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 
Somebody say amen to that. Now, I want to read one scripture here, which I think is equally as powerful. It says, Psalms 119, verse 72, it says, Indeed, the word is the greatest treasure any believer can have. Watch this. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. You're talking about multiplied billions of dollars. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold, yes, than fine gold. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right, I hate every false way. The only time you're gonna be able to hate every false way is if you spend time meditating on God's way. Is there an amen? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Pause there for a moment. I want you to listen carefully. Please don't, don't check out yet. Listen to these words. Blessed is the man who does not walk in. Walk in. That speaks of continuance. Watch. Nor stands in the path of sinners. In the path of sinners, you station yourself. Stay. You stay. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Everything I just read to you right now, walk in. That means continue in, stand, sit, is the description of meditation, to dwell, to dwell. The Bible says if you dwell in God's presence, if you dwell in His presence, if you abide in the shadow of the Almighty, then... God will answer you when you call. He will deliver you when you need deliverance. He will, he will honor you. But the question is this. We can walk in ways, continue in doing things. We're continually doing things, and yet we want God to move in, but yet we're continually doing something, perpetuating the problem. What is it that God is telling you right now? You need to stop. Stop it. That's it. All done. Stop it. You want to you wanna break a bad relationship? Delete their telephone number. Not only delete their telephone number, change your telephone number. Are you listening to me? I have people that come and tell me this. Pastor, I'm having problems with this person, this person, and this person. And this person calls me, and this person calls me, and this person calls me. And, and I just, and every time I hear their voice, it's just my heart. I said, then why are you not changing your telephone number? Well, too many people have it. So what? So what? If you want to walk in freedom, You'll do whatever you need to do. You'll pay whatever price you need to pay. You'll get whatever you need to get out of your life. You will cut this, cut that, cut this umbilical cord, that umbilical cord. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Blessed is the man who walks in the council, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but in his his delight is in the Word of God, and in His Word does He meditate day and night. This is not Joshua 1, 8. This is Psalms 1, 1 through 3. But it says the same thing. 
It says, but in his word he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither. I'll get into this next week because I want to talk to you about how meditating develops fruit bearing in your life and your leaf will not fall. The leaves on a tree are the signs of life, the vital signs, the signs of life. And as a believer, you need and ought to have signs of life, the life of Christ in you. Is there an amen? How many of you have ever looked at a Christian, there's no leaves on him? In other words, there's no life of Christ evident in his or her life. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We ask your God that this message also be one that we go back and listen to and let it sink deep inside. Help us, God, to meditate on your word. Let it go deep. Let it go from the head to the heart so that then we can live according to and do your word. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I thank you for every single person at the sound of my voice. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you, O oh Lord, would begin a transformation in their lives. Begin a transformation in their lives. Work in them. Have them to stop. Have them to stop and to meditate. Give them the right scriptures, the right words. Give them the verse they need to stop and to dwell on. Because that's the word they're going to live. Father, if there's anyone here struggling with immoral thoughts, immorality, perverseness of heart, give them scriptures that talk about the purity of the heart. Dear God, where your word teaches us to live a pure and a chaste life in all forms of sexual immorality. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless, dear God, every single person at the sound of my voice and that your word will transform us. Your word will change us. Your word, your word, your word. That it translate into action. That it translate into decision-making that is center to the heart of God in the name of Jesus somebody shout amen somebody shout amen somebody shout amen